so welcome welcome to my garden um during lockdown uh, lockdown um people sometimes say that it's uh, it's very nice to uh, uh, see me sitting in the garden hearing the birds but there's also a very practical reason that i've got three children that suddenly are doing school from home um there's also a big difference between homeschooling and doing school from home that's what the homeschoolers are telling me so anyway so i hope that you're going to enjoy this session today i'm very excited about this open the slide here so many of our engines look like this this, this is how, how our, uh, the engines of our body look and this is not what you want this is not how you want your engine to look because actually all of us sit with an immune system that looks like this it's an incredible um, um, machine that is complex it's wonderful so if there's one thing that i want to achieve today in this particular session that i'm going to have with you guys is that you look at your immune system from a new respectful place um i'm i'm saddened by the amount of fear that the COVID 19 um, pandemic has created you need to be excited my friends about this this immune system it's incredible it is powerful and it is going to help you your entire life and many of us do not give it the respect that it um, should receive it is this is going to help you I, I need to i cannot overstress this enough and i'm going to say this a lot today is that your immune system is strong enough to handle any virus any bacteria any parasite any fungus you need to hear this today friends and you need to and i'm going to show you how this immune system okay, is supposed to work properly Part of my training is my children, my, my three loveys here, and um, all three of them were at um, creche at the same time. And let me tell you something, that was an absolute adventure um, of <laughs> infections. I think my kids had about 31 infections in that year that they were at creche at exactly the same time. So I've tried and tested many things, and the thought here that I want to share is, is that the immune system actually enjoys this exercise. You need to hear this today so that's that's one of the things why i don't want lockdown to uh, continue for too long is because friends we need we need to be exposed to the world around us viruses and bacteria aren't all bad for you you need to interact with viruses and bacteria in the environment i've been saying this for years um, and people that listen to my microbiome talks talks about the the the, the human intestine and bacteria will know that part of the triggering of your immune system happens with viruses and bacteria and that sounds a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? Um, we think that, uh, that we should just avoid everything and everything should just be crystal clean. Well, that's a problem. And um, 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 the whole concept of that everything must just be clean is, is, is a problem because the hygiene hypothesis says that it actually disrupts our immune system, especially children. Children that crawl around on the floor, it disrupts their immune systems. If, they don't, or if they're not exposed to dirt from the floor, dirt from cow dung, in the garden so i haven't got plans to um, um capsulate cow dung but um th there's there's something here there's a there's a, something about this immune system that is constantly um modulated with exposure so you need to you need to tie that somewhere in your brains but um what, what's very important for me um about when we talk about uh, this immune system topic and it's the perfect time for it this is we just before may we just before winter people are worried about um, winter illnesses and you need to know this is that the same type of um, pathogen uh, a virus like coronavirus it's a, those types of pathogens are predominant in winter okay 73 percent um, of uh, or 90 percent of upper respiratory tract infections are caused by viruses okay are you getting this and how do we then try to treat the viruses or we actually put we put our doctors under pressure we tell them to give us antibiotics are antibiotics going to work for viruses answer is no not i'm going to take a sip of my tea every now and then for my um you know keep my 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 throat nice and lubricated but also, also a bit cool on my stoop today so guys they get this so now you get, get given an antibiotic that kills with your bacteria in your intestine so your immune system actually drops the antibiotic didn't kill the viruses okay this is important you need to know which things will help your body deal with the virus better so the immune system is the key here right and we obviously know you know and that we can, we can with certain approaches reduce the severity so reduce the duration reduce the cost of um 
viral infections. And the key here, and this picture shows a white blood cell, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse there, this is the white blood cell eating a bacteria. And the next slide is um, uh, bacteria. This is, um, oh, sorry, um, uh, natural killer cells, your white blood cells killing a cancer tumor. There's a cancer tumor right over there and it's being killed by the white blood cells. <clears throat> so first concept quickly, um, should you be stopping your fever if you have um, an infection? And the simple answer to that, and I think intuitively most of you know by now, that this is a bad thing to do. You don't want to stop your body from functioning. So this super high performance, supercharged engine is now getting nicely on, you know, on its right temperature to fight infection. And, um, <clears throat> You, then what do, what do we do? We give ourselves uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We give ourselves uh, paracetamol to break the fever because we are scared of the fever. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. Don't be scared of the fever. I know it's very difficult for a parent. I've got three kids. I've been there. My kids um, with their high fevers, because what are we worried about? We're worried about seizures. Okay. Now, let me tell you something about uh, febrile convulsions or seizures that come with um, temperature. They will happen to that child irrespective of the temperature. The child that's predisposed to have a seizure will get it anyway. Our parents don't have uh, paracetamol and uh, um, brufins and ibuprofens and um, these syrups, you know, cl close by. Have them in the home if your child bumps their knee and the knee is really sore for pain. If, if the fever goes really high, you need to go and see your doctor. That's the point about fever. Okay, so, so let's look at the approach today. We're going to talk about uh, substances that are not helping you, disease prevention, and some big guns. Right. One of the biggest things that we are doing wrong in winter, okay, let me just quickly stop myself. So, guys, th this is a massive topic. Um, this is my first time ever speaking to about 100 people via a Zoom session, so please bear with me. Um, it's, it's difficult not to see my audience interact with me, so I'm going to do my best to get through the topics um, as thoroughly as possible, but, but also it's a wide topic. So I'm not going to, I don't want to keep you guys here too long. So we're looking at a, maybe a 35 to a 40 minute session. And then I'm going to um, open, open the floor for questions because I've already received uh, many questions beforehand that I'm now dealing with in the session. I'm going to try um, and then we'll do some uh, questions afterwards. So there's, I know I can't deal with everything in absolute detail. But if you go to my YouTube channel, you go to my Facebook page, you'll find more information there. And I'm going to be posting more videos as we go along. <clears throat> okay. Um, the first thing that a lot of people take too much of or shouldn't be taking at all is bovine dairy, uh, milk, cheese, um, yogurt. Guys, dairy produces more mucus in your mucous membranes. And I've just found that people that have sinusitis, chronic sinusitis, over the long term, they should look at these... Um, <clears throat> Um, substitutes from rice milk to coconut milk to I found a very nice organic soya milk in one of one of the shops in South Africa that works for me um, but you need to find replacements if you tend to get lots of colds and flu okay so that's that's the first point that I want to make I've been doing this for many years and I found that this is one of the big things that people should do then second big topic is the drug that most people are addicted to in the world today and that is the overload and overload happens with sugar sugar high glycemic index foods um, <clears throat> guys on the day that you have too much sugar on that day you will produce too much leptin that leptin hormone is going to dysregulate your immune response you need to hear this you need to hear this the leptin if it stays, goes high, dysregulates. It's, it's, it's obviously in combination with insulin, insulin resistance, leptin resistance is a term that we're now looking at. But all your white blood cells have receptors for leptin. So on the day that you have too much carbohydrates, so you're starting your morning with sugary oats, even sugary oats. Then after that, you have biscuits. And then after that, you have your pasta. And you later in the afternoon, you start drinking fizzy cold drinks. You are increasing leptin. You are confusing. Because remember now, let's go back. All your white blood cells have what? They have leptin receptors. They work better in a lower leptin environment. 
came. So if you are constantly pushing leptin levels, you are confusing your white blood cells and you are actually making yourself a risk, a risk factor. And you will find that with the COVID-19 deaths and people that are high risk COVID-19, the more visceral fat you have, visceral fat means around your tummy, um, the more um, cytokines you produce like leptin. Ever heard of the cytokine storm? I think now our society knows more about cytokine storms than ever before in the history of humanity because why? Coronavirus, the way it kills the, the person is it triggers a cytokine storm. Your own white blood cells produce too many cytokines, like leptin, but also other cytokines that then damage your lungs. So want, want to be healthy, want to fight infection, want to have a strong immune system, then have a lower carbohydrate, higher Mediterranean style fat diet. Okay, or some people with LCHF, low carb, high fat diet. But this is very important because the lower you keep, you can even with very, very high protein diet, you can actually dysregulate your leptin as well. So careful, we've seen that. We've seen that people that go on very high protein diets, they'll for example, lose weight in the first month and after that they stop losing weight because there's dysregulation that takes place. But people who go on a higher fat Mediterranean style diet, and there's not enough time to not really go into that topic here now, but we, I'm going to do a separate session at a point about that. But that is how I get people to lose weight. The same mechanism that I get people to lose weight is how I get people to have strong immune systems. Okay, you don't want to spike your leptin all the time. Okay, so that's just over the long term, then insulin, leptin, dysregulation. Obviously, there's cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke risk. And if you look at the annual sugar, sugar consumption, just look at this graph here quickly. This is how much sugar a person would eat per year on average in 1815. Now look how it changed. This is how it changed. Check this. Okay, so hopefully some of you are now gasping in horror about the amount of um, refined sugar consumption um, in our average diets. And it's not just sugar in sweeties and cold drink. It is also things like this, um, pasta bread, um, uh, slop chippies, um, French fries. Um, and at the end of the day, the average um, Western is having one and a half kilograms of uh, this stuff per week. But to drive the point home, the easiest way to get large quantities of refined carbohydrates or sugary carbs into your body are drinks. And this is, you'll see on my kilojoule scale here, this could be um, anything from alcohol here um, at uh, 250 kilojoules for a tot of strong liquor to a beer. This is a light beer over here. This is a normal beer over there at 550 kilojoules. From, from alcohol to fruit juices, look how high red grape juice um, um, scores on the kilojoule scale. The point is just, it's very easy to get too much sugar into your body via the consumption of carbohydrate-rich drinks or refined carbohydrate-rich drinks. So water remains the safest drink and then water is then the next topic of how you prevent viral infections. Because if you dehydrate, remember now, winter is a dehydration or a dehydrated type um, scenario. And um, so don't have dehydrated mucous membranes, drink enough water. How much water should you drink? Well, the thirst response to be when I'm thirsty is a reasonably accurate way to look at it, but it's dangerous. For some people I found can wait quite long before they drink water. So I'm, I usually tell people, look at your body weight, 300 milliliters for every 10 kilograms body weight. And if you, the water is very boring, cut some fruit and drop it into your water. That's going to help you. Okay. Okay. So by now, years ago in my seminars, I used to have to tell people how to wash their hands and how to use hand cleaner. I think seriously, I can skip these two slides because most of you, you know, our president also keeps on um, um, reminding us how to do these two things. You know, know how to do this. Um, keep your hands clean. It's a known good way of, of preventing flu is to clean your hands. And so that's why obviously it, it, it's got a big um, uh, effect um, with COVID. Let's talk about sleep. Okay. So there's a, a video on my, on my YouTube channel about sleep where I challenge people during lockdown to do a sleep study. Okay, because the average person watching me now does not sleep enough. You don't sleep enough. 
game. Why? Because you're binge watching your series late at night, or you are working on your phone, doing your social media, or you are answering emails late at night. And the blue white light of all these devices is suppressing melatonin and it's messing up with your sleep. But also, how much sleep do you need? Have you ever done a sleep study where you go to bed at exactly the same time at night, where you wake up naturally, or you wait for your body to wake up naturally in the morning? Have you ever done that? If you haven't done that, I really want to recommend that you do something like that. But sleep is important. This sleep is how most people actually dysregulate their immune systems. Okay, intermittent fasting. Now, usually at this point, I would have asked people to put up their hands and ask them who is doing intermittent fasting or who is going to do it or who has heard about it. I think by now, most of you have heard about intermittent fasting. It is a very, very healthy thing to do if you are healthy enough to do it. Obviously, you have to talk to your doctor about this. If you're a type 1 diabetic on insulin, you can't just go ahead and do it. But this is, this is something, this is one of my secrets in helping people to lose weight. I, I combine this with a low carbohydrate, high fat diet, and this is how I help people to lose weight. Okay, intermittent fasting. 16-8 I find is the best way to do it or the easiest. There are other ways. What 16-8 means is you stop eating at 6, 7 or 8 at night and the following morning, 16 hours later, you break your fast. You have breakfast, breakfast. Okay, 16 hours. And um, this is what I do with my patients. And it, it, in most people, it has a wonderful effect. It increases growth hormone levels. It decreases blood pressure. But it has a lovely effect on the immune system because it has an effect on leptin. It has an effect on insulin. Back to the leptin issue. Then how do you break that fast? Well, you should preferably not have a big bowl of oats with four tablespoons of sugar. Rather have two eggs with avocado and a slice of tomato. That is a healthy breakfast, friends. And just, to, just speaking about eggs, did you know that eggs is a health food? There's absolutely no link to eggs and more heart disease. There's a link between sugar and heart disease and sugar and inflammation and the inflammation that it causes inside your blood vessels. Okay, so intermittent fasting. It's a very, very good habit. Good, next, sunlight. Now, many of you that have been watching my videos will know that sunlight for me is absolutely paramount. Um, the, the, being in the sun triggers things in your body that helps um, you to make more serotonin so you feel good. That's why you don't develop a, a disorder called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. So thank, I don't, I'm not sure if I've got uh, more than hemisphere friends um, I'm signing into this uh, webinar today, but here in the South, in South Africa, we have so much sunlight, but we don't use it. I see so many people, I test vitamin D levels every day of my life on patients, and I see people with very low vitamin D levels. Okay, so get sunlight, but then also test your vitamin D levels. Okay, so while you're listening to me now, um, I would, uh, it would be a good thing to, to, to know what your vitamin D level is. I test my vitamin D levels twice a year, just before winter and just after winter. Okay, so I want to see with what am, I, what am I going in and I want to see with what am I going out of winter. And if my levels are not to the upper limit of the range, I like to be closer to 50. And in South Africa, the range we use in South Africa um, it says you must be between 30 and 50. I see lots of people below 30. That's definitely not where you want to be. But then I use a vitamin D3. It's a bioidentical supplement, vitamin D3. Um, and vitamin D is an absolute immune bomb. Vitamin D is so important and it's going to help you. Okay. Um, uh, I was going to say something else about vitamin D now. Yes, oh, the, the people that have very low levels, you'll also find there's a link between many colds and flus when you have low levels. So you want to keep that level nice and high, but vitamin D affects cancer prevention. Um, so just get your vitamin D levels tested and get yourself on a vitamin D supplement if you need to do that. Usually there are supplements you take once a week. Exercise, so much being done about exercise. And I think many of us, have been challenged to change our concept of exercise. Um, I find most people don't like going to gym. So hopefully you've experimented with something at home during lockdown. 
um, I did with my kids. We put, us, we put up a very elementary um, four station exercise um, uh, circuit and we gave ourselves 50 seconds per exercise and we did four circuits and we tried to do that every single day. And that is the principle, the new principle in science when it comes to exercise is do small amounts, but do it six days of the week. Small amounts, six days of the week. Okay, all right, so I'm just getting, I'm starting to get uh, questions here. So I'm gonna to look to my phone on the side here. Okay, so Barsi is asking, what strength and doses of vitamin D would I recommend? Okay, so we're just gonna go back to the vitamin D quickly. Sorry, Barsi, I did only receive this now. Um, you need to go and test your vitamin D level. That's how you will know what strength and dosage. The average person usually needs about six, 600 to 1,000 international units per day. Now, many of the good multinutrients contain a decent dose of vitamin D, but if your, your vitamin D level is below 30 on your blood test, you're gonna need about 25,000 to 50,000 units a week. And some people are higher consumers. I found that when I started supplementing vitamin D, it took me a long time to get my vitamin D level sorted out because it was something that I really struggled um, to get up. So I needed a good 50,000 units a week. Back to exercise. So did you get that about the exercise? 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of exercise, six days a week has a positive effect on the immune system, has a positive effect on weight loss, on energy, on pain in the body. And uh, many research articles are being published about this, about doing small amounts of exercise. Okay, so those of you that don't like going to the gym for an hour, this is your moment. Um, your moment has arrived. You don't necessarily have to go to gym. You can do 10 to 15 minutes at home. It's more sustainable for some people and it's gonna help you. Okay, let's move on to other supplements. We've now spoken about vitamin D. Um, and uh, obviously we're going to lean towards, this is a, just a, a model of the coronavirus, we're going to lean towards viral infections, but whatever I do and share with you now about the immune system is going to help um, everything, even bacterial um, uh, infections. Okay. I had the privilege, vitamin C, vitamin C. Um, please go to my YouTube channel, um, um, hashtag Dr. Anton. If you search hashtag Dr. Anton in YouTube, you'll find me. Um, and I have two uh, videos there about the immune system with vitamin C. One is called the weaknesses of COVID, to how to exploit it. And the other one is how intravenous vitamin C is saving people's lives with COVID-19, coronavirus. In New York, ICUs in New York and ICUs in China. Vitamin C, it's, it's just, it's one of my favorites. I can't say it's the favorite because I've got many favorites, but this, you, you cannot do your day without extra vitamin C. Okay, this is a very, very important and cheap. It's a cheap supplement. You don't need a fancy supplement. Normal ascorbic acid is going to do the job. And the list of things that vitamin C is going to do in your body is too long to list here. But the, the two that, that are most important is the fact that it's going to suppress viral replication and it's going to um, help um, with white blood cells that they work better. So um, I've studied the science of vitamin C for years. I had the privilege of doing an interview with Patrick Holford last week. Um, he just wrote a book called Flu Fighters. Um, uh, if you follow my Facebook page, you will get a link tomorrow or Wednesday to this interview about this book that he wrote. An absolute must have in your home, this book, because it details the history of vitamin C, all the science. It's a scientific thing, people. This is not um, grandmother, my grandma's ideas. This is well proven. Okay, so how much should you be taking? Well, anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day. The average person usually is good with 500 to 1,000 milligrams taken twice a day. That's easy to do. You can buy a cheap ascorbic acid tablet and you can achieve that. And don't worry about the acidity of the ascorbic acid. How acid is your stomach? I wonder if anyone knows that. You can just put up your hand in your house and answer for yourself. Yes, the stomach is two, pH of two and below that, 1.6 at times, 1.9 at times, depends on you know, at what level the, the, the stomach is functioning. Ascorbic acid is a level, at a level of two. So the stomach and ascorbic acid like each other. Okay, because they, they pretty much are acid both. Okay, thousands, two, three thousand. So, so the 3,000 milligrams, this is now where I've got patients that have issues. Okay, my wife is a type one diabetic. I do not allow her to take less than 3,000 milligrams a day. 
and if she shows signs of illness, I do the following. I give her 200, 2,000 milligrams stat, which means immediately, and then I give her 1,000 milligrams every hour until her symptoms start going away. I usually see that in the first day. You're not going to do this for days. It's not necessary because you will create an environment where the vitamin C will start killing the viruses and where um, the body will, the, the functioning of the immune system will just go up because of the vitamin C. Okay. Some people just focus on the six gram barrier. Um, I, I call it that um, because research has shown if you really want to affect a viral illness, you've got to go through 6,000 milligrams in a day. That's what you have to do. Um, so you can then do the 2,000 milligram stat and just do maybe another two or three, even three dosages, go, go to 8,000 milligrams. Is it safe? It is incredibly safe. Okay. Um, will I get a kidney stone? No, you won't. Studies have shown you will not get a kidney stone. But you obviously have to chat with your doctor about this. Maybe you're someone that has a current kidney stone. Be careful in that case. Um, is um, the decreased kidney function a problem? No, it is not. It is not. Um, I'm just looking at the questions as they come in. Um, so if you do have decreased kidney function, yes, go and chat to your doctor. Just ask, you know, what, what his opinion is. But in, in, in my practice experience, I've got patients that have mildly reduced kidney function, hasn't got any effect at all. Okay. I hope, I hope you guys are, are, are getting all this and seeing my slides nicely and hearing me nicely. My next rock star is, is zinc. It's absolutely critical zinc now i i'm very big on a on a, on, a, on taking a good multi-nutrient every day because it, it becomes confusing and you're going to have a lot of bottles on the shelf so i have a very strong multi-nutrient um on my shelf i'm, I'm not going to name brand names um or i steer clear of brand names in my presentations but you can contact the organizers of this webinar today to just get links to brands mostly south african brands i like to support local um, that uh, for a mal name of a multinutrient that contains um, good levels of most of these things. Um, but zinc, very important, 15 milligrams a day, long term. Yeah, it's very important um, long term. But during illness, you can bump up your dose to 75 milligrams. Some people go as high as 90, but do that for a few days. You don't have to do it for long. And uh, the research has shown that you can reduce um, the duration of a cold by as much as 33%. Okay, so here's a question. I'm just going to pause there. Um, so this is a mommy asking me what is the best carbs to feed growing boys between the ages of 10 to 14 okay so that uh, grow, a, a boy that age is called the commando worm hey right so yeah so um stone ground flour no 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 stone ground flour is fine um but what you need to do is, is you need to make sure that there's enough fat in their diets because fat is what suppresses um uh, the satiety signal in your brain um, that's why people who stop eating fat become very hungry. That's why the fat, though fat diets of the 1970s and the 1980s and partly 1990s were a disaster. It was a disaster. We told people to stop eating fat. And what happened to them? They became ravenous wolves. They would destroy their fridges at night because <laughs> they weren't eating fat. So mommy, you need to find ways to give your, your, your growing sons enough fat. Give them lots of eggs. I hope they can eat pilchards, give them pilchards, um, let them eat meat, um, let them eat lots of olive oil, olives, um, cook your food in coconut oil, drizzle olive oil over those vegetables. If you want to layer some goat's milk cheese over the vegetables, but you need to increase the fat so that those um, high kilojoule requiring bodies can function properly. But if you're going to give them carbs, then your, your idea of the home-baked stone ground rye bread that <laughs> that you are doing i'm sure i'm laughing because I, I don't know how many people actually do that so you're you're just that, that next level um uh energy to to be able to do that so well done with that but yep go for it give them the rye bread but make sure there's enough fat that you that you give them with the rye bread um just quick other question here um uh, Okay, so vitamin C due to kidney crystal problems. Okay, so there are people that have kidney crystal problems. Then you're going to have to look at my, um, my other uh, uh, presentations here. Just make sure that your kidneys really do respond badly to vitamin C. Just make sure that it is the vitamin C and not other things. Um, and also the kidney stone issue, vitamin B6 deficiency. If you have a vitamin B6 deficiency, you are going to have, be more prone to develop a kidney stone in general. 
When we speak about supercharging your immune system, then probiotic bacteria, or the good bacteria in your intestine, is so very, very important. 70 to 80% of your immune cells or your immune tissue is in the wall of the intestine. And having the right colonies of bacteria, meaning not having dysbiosis, but having a healthy biome, is going to help you tremendously. These little bacteria, they all act as tiny triggers, billions of them, triggering the, triggering the innate immune system. Um, here is a list of some of the bacteria that I use in my home. Um, definitely not an exhaustive list. I mean, there are many more names like this. Um, and what I do is, is right through the year, I take a probiotic. I start with a loading dose, um, especially after antibiotics. I start with a loading dose of two weeks to about a month where I take it every day. If you're a new user to probiotics, then do that. Do a loading dose. And then after that, you can just do it every second to third day that you take a booster dose. But I know people from all over the world are watching my videos. So phone, look at the phone number on your product and phone the company that produced it. Ask them about accelerated decay and decay testing. Ask them if the product is supposed to be in the fridge or on the shelf. But this is such an important thing that you need to do um, from an immune supporting perspective. Selenium, okay guys, selenium works in a variety of ways. Um, helps your white blood cells, it cleans up um, oxidants, um, and it also you know, deals with viruses directly. But this is part of your multinutrient. That's what I'm saying, get yourself on a strong, well-formulated, multi-ingredient multinutrient. Same with vitamin A and E that you see on the screen there. Um, go and check your multinutrient, make sure that, they've, uh, that there's something in there. Uh, then just a thought on some unique ingredients. Um, I know some multinutrients in South Africa do contain resveratrol. Some do also contain beta carotene, some of the things you see on the screen here. Um, uh, recyclers, all they do is they recycle um, your antioxidants after they've worked. Okay, so vitamin C doesn't just do a single cycle by itself. So if you have a healthy um, body, if you eat your vegetables, because I forgot actually to mention that vegetables are very important as the foundation of your diet. Okay, remember that now as the foundation, because now you're going to take lots of flavonoids and lots of antioxidants. Um, and as I take my vitamin C, my ascorbic acid, if you look at the graph of ascorbic acid, it's going to spike in my bloodstream, go down, get recycled, spike again, spike again, spike again. That is literally how vitamin C is going to function inside your body. You are going to um, be the lucky recipient of plasma level spikes of vitamin C after you've taken it just because you have, if you have certain nutrients in your body, and that's why a vegetable-based diet is so very important, but I like to add my unique own multinutrient that I take that's got a few funky ingredients in it, like broccoli and beta-carotene and resveratrol. Okay, so I'm, I'm starting to go into my home straight here. I'm, I'm sorry that it's fast, guys, but, I, but, but really this webinar was to expose you to a lot of options. Um, and one of the questions that I received, and I'm going to answer it with this slide, is I've got asthma, what do I do? Many people have been asking me about asthma and their worries about COVID-19. Um, if you do have asthma, then follow the, the, the um, advice in this webinar. But you need to look at quercetin um, that we find in several vegetables like broccoli, like red onions. But quercetin in supplement form um, really whacks viruses in the lung and it helps the lung um, to, to function better. It helps people with chronic allergies, actually, quercetin. It's a safe thing to do. This You'll, you'll see I lean towards um, um, natural products. Um, I do prescribe antibiotics. Okay, some people think I don't. I do. If the right person arrives at my practice and they need an antibiotic, I give them an antibiotic, but I protect their body with the right um, uh, nutrients later on. And I also don't just give an antibiotic, I combine it with things like quercetin and, and I'll show you a few other things just now. Olive leaf extract, you'll find this in most pharmacies in the world. <clears throat> this is an incredible antiviral, incredible antibacterial, it has function against parasites as well. Um, I'm showing you the picture of one brand here. Um, they, this is a South African fulvic acid brand. Fulvic acid is one of my heroes. It's a superstar. It's a rock star. Um, and there's another brand um, that's made in the same factory called BioBalance Immunova. BioBalance Immunova. There's, so there's two brands, Fulvic Act 1 and BioBalance. It's always in my home. I treat um, 
you know, when we feel a bit down, um, immune system wise are useful, we guess it. But <clears throat> both these brands have a product for urinary tract infections. So when my, I've got two daughters, when they get a urinary tract infection, or if my wife gets one, I use a cranberry fulvic acid combo. And I give that to them orally. And then what I do is I apply a probiotic bacterial spray. It's only one on the market. You'll find it in, in the big pharmacies. I apply a probiotic spray and it helps with um, urine tract infections. Then colostrum is another rock star. This, this um, is the only thing from cows that I do use. So I also use butter. Both colostrum and butter have got a very low allergenic profile and they directly prevent viruses from um, entering cells and they've got an effect in the lungs where viruses want to penetrate the lungs. They have an effect, but I, I leave the colostrum as sort of an emergency on my shelf. And just a, a few more thoughts as I start finishing off. Um, <clears throat> garlic is definitely an antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. And it's also anti-humans um, anti being very close to you. This is how you. This is how you promote physical distancing. Um, right. I like echinacea, but it only works for a short while. Okay. So to use echinacea for two weeks, after two weeks you need to take a break. And just my my friends with autoimmune disorders, and and I've been inundated with uh, questions about autoimmunity. Yes, I am going to do a session on autoimmunity, but this is going to be a long session. It's going to be on a different um, platform. I've got a different platform that I use called Vimeo um, for this. It's not been done yet, but I am going to produce disease protocols, how I approach conditions like autoimmunity, and I'm going to um, put that out there. Um, there's also a very interesting thing from beehives called propolis or propolis um, that is also antibacterial, antiviral. Okay, so here's the, the protocol. I see it's now quarter to 12, so we're doing well. So here's the protocol. This is what I do on a daily basis. Don't forget the omega-3s, don't forget magnesium, it's not even on here. Um, I do my probiotic in, mostly through the year, I do the probiotic only um, every third day after a month loading dose, because you only need it every third day. I do zinc, I do fulvic acid, and for, I don't do, personally, um, I'm sorry about that spelling mistake, I don't do um, quercetin myself, um, but for asthmatics, I think this is a, not a bad idea at all to do some quercetin. Then the treatment protocol, there you go. Treatment got a protocol goes up. Um, 2,000 to 5,000 milligrams stat at the start of an illness in that whole process that I explained a bit earlier. Um, and uh, probiotic zinc, fulvic acid. Then I add colostrum. If I feel really ill, I add colostrum and olive leaf extract. Okay, so guys, that I know is a lot of information. Um, and... Um, the immune system is an issue at the moment, but I'm not going to go back to what I told you. I'm going to say again, you have an incredible, amazing immune system. You need to know this. You have an incredible immune system. You need to understand this. You need to remind yourself of this. Don't suppress your immune system. Allow it to flourish. But part of that flourishing process is that you're exposed. It's not a problem to be exposed. Um, but you need to look after your immune system doing the things that I said there. 